What's up guys, it's Tom here and welcome to the Arsenal Liverpool post-match reaction and analysis video and Liverpool have beaten Arsenal at the Emirates four times out of the previous five games and guess what, an incredible statistic this is the first time since 1948 so almost like 80 years ago when Arsenal lost their first home game of the season in the FA Cup so this is the first time since 1948 that Arsenal went out of the FA Cup in their first home game of the, the, the uh, and the first game uh, at home in the FA Cup and also Ibu Konate again was absolutely immense he was a monster of a defender just like in the Liverpool Arsenal game in the Premier League and this time I think actually Arsenal should have been two or three nil up before Liverpool tweaked things tactically in the first half Liverpool started with Harvey Elliott on the right wing and that wasn't really effective Gakpo sometimes dropped in the middle and I think Darwin Nunez should play on the left wing because in the second half when Darwin Nunez was on the left wing Liverpool were much more attacked, uh, effective Liverpool played much much better in the second but half but in the first half Arsenal were so incredibly wasteful with their chances let me know actually on the balance of the play do you think Liverpool deserved to win because even though Liverpool hit the bar twice and we missed some glorious chances, Arsenal were the better team. Arsenal pretty much dominated Liverpool for the, for the majority of the first half and the first 15 minutes of the second half. But then Liverpool grew into the game. But Arsenal and especially Kai Havertz were so wasteful, so irresponsible. They had guilt edge chances when they just... They were low on confidence and they were afraid to shoot. And that's what losing back-to-back -back games does to you. They were low on confidence. And of course, Gabriel Jesus being injured was not helping Arsenal. But why didn't they trust Enketia to go up front? I mean, how do you think that Kai Havertz would be your striker against Liverpool? And that is a good idea. I don't understand. Jurgen Klopp is an absolute genius because Liverpool were without Virgil van Dijk, without Mo Salah, without Dominic Sabosley, without Endo. Four of our best players this season. We're not playing. And we played four 20-year-olds. And we yet still kept a clean sheet and won 2-0 away at the Emirates which is a phenomenal result but it thought was also down to Arsenal's bad finishing you have to be honest because Liverpool rode their luck massively in the first half and if Gabriel Jesus is playing and he has the, his shooting boats on Arsenal would have blown Liverpool away in the first half because yeah Liverpool were just uh, in the midfield when Arsenal pressed us we lost the ball so many times, the midfield structure wasn't right. McAllister had to start because Endo is off to the Asia Cup, so Endo is not in the Liverpool squad anymore. And this was, of course, a very tough game for Alexis McAllister to get his first start in after his injury. He sometimes was a little bit slow on the ball, sometimes dilly-dallied in possession, and Arsenal sometimes stole the ball from him. But luckily, Arsenal's best chances fell to either Saka or Kai Havertz and they were both incredibly wasteful in their finishing and Liverpool actually were also wasteful with their finishing in the second half before Trent Arsenal's absolutely brilliant free kick and Kivior heads it into his own net on the counter-attack Darwin Nunez picks the ball up he runs the channel Diogo Jota came on and uh, he didn't score today against Arsenal. Arsenal is Diogo Jota's favorite opponent. He has uh, already seven goals against Arsenal more than anybody else. But this time Jota gets an assist because Jota runs through on goal and at the perfect moment he passes to Luis Diaz who with Declan Rice breathing down his neck finds the top corner with his right foot absolutely is tremendous brilliant finish by Luis Diaz and the celebrations were absolutely crazy uh, I mean uh, after the Trent uh, assist and the give your own goal it was straight at the Liverpool end and there were two Liverpool fans who ran onto the pitch to celebrate with the players and Darwin Nunez was slapping the Liverpool fans head <laughs> intentionally I think that was hilarious and then Konate grabbed the hat of the Liverpool fan and threw it away <laughs> I mean, those were absolutely crazy celebrations. I absolutely loved it. And if you guys loved this video, make sure to leave a like. Up the Reds, we have knocked out Arsenal.
Arsenal and hopefully we can avoid Manchester City in the FA Cup as long as possible because against everybody else I fancy Liverpool to go through and hopefully we can get an easier draw in the next round of the FA Cup and I don't want to talk too much about the referees but Odegaard and a lot of Arsenal players were like petulant childs, crybabies, waving their hands like doing this to the referee and doing this and screaming at the referee. And yet no Arsenal player got any yellow cards for that. Guess what? The first time a Liverpool player does, goes this to the referee, he instantly goes and books him for a yellow card, the Liverpool player. So how is that fair and balanced officiating? It's not. Again, even though it wasn't, you know, the referee wasn't uh, like too bad, but I just didn't understand why he didn't book any of the Arsenal players, especially Odegaard, who was a cry acting like a crybaby, a petulant child. Every time that the decision went against him, he was waving off the referee like this and uh, also screaming at him. He should have had a yellow card in the first half, he should have had a yellow card in the second half, but never mind. The best uh, revenge is that Odegaard was the player who gave away the free kick from the first and winning Liverpool goal happened. Trent Alexander-Arnold with again an absolutely brilliant free kick de delivery into the Arsenal, Arsenal six-yard box and Kivior it hits his head and goes in. And then Liverpool, again, as I said, keep, kept going forward, kept creating chances, and I love that. Even at one nil down, Liverpool didn't just sit back, park the bus and soak up the pressure. It was a pretty open end-to-end -end game. First half, Arsenal were the better team. Second half, it was more balanced. And then in the last 30 minutes or 20 minutes, I think Liverpool were actually the better team. But the overall, on the balance of play, I, you can't say Liverpool outright deserved to win because Arsenal missed so many great chances. Joe Gomez again had a brilliant game, 49 touches, uh, one accurate long ball from two, seven final third passes, two tackles, one for four, from four, four clearances made, one block, one headed clearance, two interceptions, three recoveries and, and Joe Gomez also won five of his nine duels, but I want to check Konate's uh, stats and I want to show you that for you guys because Konate was absolutely imperious. And by the way, uh, Liverpool, because of the team selection, were the underdogs in this game, even though Arsenal, you know, in recent years haven't been uh, too good against Liverpool. As I said, we have beaten them four times out of the past five games at the Emirates, but Konate he was today absolutely spectacular, 85% pass accuracy, two ground duels won from two, um, two blocks, two clearances, two interceptions and four recoveries from Konate. And, and as I said, he was again absolutely instrumental. Kwanzaa also was very good. He got a small injury and Konate got a small knock as well. And I thought it was brilliant that uh, Liverpool selected Alisson in goal because, yeah, Kelleher is just not good enough for these kind of games and I think I would play Alisson in the League Cup semi-finals as well because there is a still uh, the quadruple arm for Liverpool. On the other hand, for Arsenal, it's an absolutely disappointing season. They are out of the League Cup already, they are out of the FA Cup, they lost six points in the past two games in the Premier League and yes, they are in the Champions League. But is this Arsenal team good enough to win the Champions League for the first time in Arsenal's history? I don't think so. It would be an absolute miracle if Arsenal ended up winning the Champions League and they definitely need a, a clinical striker. Kai Havertz alone had two big chances missed, six shots in total, only uh, two of his six shots were on target and he missed a lot of uh, big chances and I, I'm, I'm absolutely baffled. I mean, I was call, calling him a clown because he sometimes wanted to walk the ball into the net. Instead of shooting, he takes another touch and he takes another touch and he's thinking about what to do. That is a player low on confidence. Kai Havertz is not a striker and he's not worth 60 million pounds. I mean, he started the season with a massive goal drought. Yes, he has five goals now in 29 games. For a 65 million pound uh, midfielder, you would probably expect more because a lot of times Kai Havertz is playing as a false nine and uh, or, or even as, a, as a, an attacking midfielder. And he, with, the, the, with the quality that he has around him, with Odegaard, Saka, Martinelli, sometimes Gabriel is ahead of him, 
he should be scoring a lot more. I mean, today, Kai Havertz alone should have scored maybe two goals from these five or six shots that he had. But at least one, that's the minimum. He was looking at Alisson and he was afraid to shoot. I don't understand sometimes, honestly, what uh, what uh, Havertz is uh, doing and also what did Arsenal see in Kai Havertz to sign him for 65 million. Chelsea were laughing all the way to the bank it was absolutely incredible. I thought Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott were pretty decent. Uh, Darwin Nunez again with a little bit of a disappointing performance. I don't want to be too harsh on Darwin Nunez. He had three shots. He didn't hit the, ta hit the target. He created three chances for his teammates though, which was uh, really good. But he had a two-on-one situation where Darwin Nunez and Luis Diaz is running at an Arsenal defender and Darwin Nunez passes it at the perfect time, but behind Luis Diaz. So Luis Diaz, instead of shooting at goal, he has to stop, turn around and run back because the ball is behind him. That was a big mistake by Darwin Nunez and a big miss, big chance miss. Uh, Trent Oxford hits the bar after a fantastic save by Ramsdale, who made some really good saves. Uh, he didn't have to do a lot, as I said, because Liverpool were just so wasteful uh, with their chances. But Jota also hits the bar from a corner and the, the, then the ball bounces to Nunez, who from like seven or eight yards out blazes high and wide. Uh, not at all handsome shot. Uh, way way over the bar so Darwin Nunez still needs to sharpen up his finishing but his runs the way that he occupies defenders the way he drags defenders away from other people it was actually very very impressive and in the end you know the trainer Oxford's brilliant de delivery won us the game and it was really important not to draw this game because now Liverpool will have one and a half or two week break uh, after the F the League Cup semi-final on Wednesday we play Fulham in the League Cup semi-final and Jurgen Klopp can play really full strength team in that game as well because Jurgen Klopp rotated very smartly Bobby Clark and Conor Bradley came on and actually Conor Bradley defended um, Martinelli better than Trent. Trent had a great, great game but Martinelli roasted him twice but thankfully Konate was there to stop the Martinelli's cross going to the Arsenal player so Konate bailed out Trent in those two defensive moments but going forward Trent is the best right back in the world. It was absolutely immense uh, in attack and his passing was brilliant and that's it for my review video i really hope you guys enjoyed it a new liverpool career mode episode is coming tomorrow so stay tuned for that and thanks for watching guys thank you for your awesome support have a nice day see you later goodbye